Well, 130 million square foot trauma room, all for $229. A little bit of a cryptic name, but you'll, you'll understand. I'm originally from Caracas, Venezuela, a place of uh, abundant natural beauty. I'm a trauma surgeon, which means that I take care of uh, injured patients, many times severely injured patients. Injury is a public health problem. Injuries are the first cause of death and disability in children and adults, one to 44 years of age. So I don't want to be pessimistic or give you bad news, but most of you in the audience will die because of an injury. <laughs> so the, the good news, though, is that most traumatic injuries are preventable. You know, helmet, seat belts, not drinking and driving, speed limits, all those things that sometimes we, we, we preach but don't do. But basically, common sense can keep you pretty safe. So injuries range from motor vehicle crashes, falls, beatings, burns, or really anything that can harm or, or potentially kill you. Overall, causing 150,000 deaths per year. It's a very expensive problem. In 2009, the federal government, the state and local governments, along with individuals or corporations, spent $2.5 trillion in healthcare. That's 2.5 with a whole bunch of zeros. And uh, that was uh, more than $8,000 per person. And this is one year, accounting for 17.3% of the GDP. So in medicine, we use pretty costly and complex technologies. Very expensive stuff. And the reason is we want to get better at making patients better, at saving lives. And we all know that top technology can be very expensive. But what most people don't know is that out there, there is top technology that is inexpensive and that is so commonly used that even kids are comfortable using it. And that it's also, like I said, inexpensive and has the potential to save lives, along with thousands of dollars in each particular case. Trauma and time are very tight together. From the time of injury to the time of receiving expert care. That brings us to the golden hour. It's kind of an old concept of, 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 of time related to survival in trauma. And uh, that can be summarized with the rule of the three R's. Bringing the right patient to the right place at the right time. So with this project, we kind of tweak things a little bit. And using the same rule, we want to bring the right specialist using technology to the right patient right away. So we all know, and this is studied, that if you get care at a trauma center, then your risk of dying is going to be down by 25%. So that is very clear. So that means that if you have to travel a long time to get cared for in a trauma center, your mortality is going to be higher. You're not going to be doing so good. And this map kind of illustrates that, where the, the transport times are longer, then the mortality is higher. In Maine, that also applies. And the blue dots, that is basically helicopter transport times. And it doesn't even cover the whole state of Maine, and it's more than an hour. So that only applies for 30% of the US population. 30% of the population in the US only, only them, have access to a trauma center within 60 minutes of injury. That means that 90 million people, 90 million people along 75% of the geography of the United States do not have access to a trauma center within 60 minutes of being injured. And that is a big problem. So getting care at a trauma center gives you the best chance of making it, having a trauma surgeon take care of your injuries. The other problem is that we're kind of a rare commodity because there is a deficit of specialists. Sadly, most specialists are based in or near trauma centers, uh, I mean, or, uh, or urban centers, and uh, about 20 to 25 percent of the population lives in rural areas. So there's a deficit of 1,700 trauma surgeons 
across 460 trauma centers in all the United States. And that is the problem. We only get 60 new trauma surgeons graduating every year, so you kind of do the math. <laughs> so Maine is a rural area. There's a lot of green in there. And in Maine, there are only three trauma centers. Most of the trauma centers are located, two of them in the lower part, and then Eastern Maine Medical Center, where I work, is kind of in between the lower middle and the middle middle. <laughs> so we have two-thirds of the state for our care, and uh, that's uh, actually pretty interesting for our hospital, <laughs> because uh, if you see here, you have uh, the state of Maine, a bunch of red dots, only three of those dots are trauma centers, and the rest is little hospitals that have some knowledge of trauma, but they are not expert care trauma centers. So we cover an area of 26,000 square miles, that's where the 130 million square feet come from, one you know, puzzle solved, <laughs> and uh, roughly is the combined area of New Hampshire, Vermont, and Massachusetts. So ground transport and time of transport can be between three and 200 miles. The picture is worth a thousand words. Well, I want to bring, propose that a video is worth a thousand pictures. The state of Maine have, as I said, only three trauma centers, and uh, by the way of teletrauma, which is telemedicine applied to trauma, which is virtual presence applied to trauma, we are able to connect the main hospital, Eastern Maine Medical Center, to a lot of little hospitals by the way of uh, two-way cameras and large screens. So this is actually pretty cool, and we've had some, some national recognition because of our program. But the system is cumbersome to use, it's complex, it's very expensive, it's not intuitive. When I get the call, or my partners get the call, they need to go rush and try to find the, the nearest camera and then sit down, turn it on, go through several steps and then finally connect. And remember time, we, we, we have to get going in here. And uh, so it's, it's not an ideal system. So we had been looking for something better, something more mobile, more portable, more affordable. So well, I'm an avid uh, iPhone user. And uh, a couple of years ago, I, I got word that the iPhone 4 was coming out and uh, that the uh, phone was coming with an application called FaceTime. And uh, that was going to allow basically kind of a dream come true of, of mobile, portable, audio, video, high definition, live connection uh, between someone and someone from anywhere to anywhere. And not just the iPhone, but the iPod Touch, which is a similar device but it's cheaper, it doesn't require buying a telephone line, and it works with a Wi-Fi network. So uh, we thought about creating a program using the iPod Touch to expand and make our teletrauma program more mobile. For the price of an iPod, that's the second mystery, $229, we suddenly were able to spread the reach of our trauma program 130 million square feet. So it took a while and uh, some planning and designing of the protocols and mainly trying to comply with federal patient privacy regulation. We uh, came up with uh, a project where using six of our uh, existing sites they were provided with iPod Touch, and uh, they were using the same Wi-Fi network the hospital already had, so they weren't paying any extra money for that. And uh, we decided to try it, and uh, so far has been so good. And this is a mock video, but it illustrates the point. Hello. Dr. Han. Hi there. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. I'm, uh, I heard that you have a patient with a head trauma. How can I help you? Yes, uh, Fletcher was hit in the head with baseball. Um, he was a little bit dazed, and I just was wondering if you could check uh, his eye movements for me. Absolutely. Hi, Fletcher. Hello. How are you feeling? Okay. Well, I'm going to check your eye movements real quick, okay? I'm just, uh, don't move your head, just move your eye, okay? Dr. Han will give me a good close-up. Great. How about you look up, look down. Look left and right. The first time I got a call was to take care of a little girl who had had an accident uh, while down his skin, and uh, she had fractured her face, among other things. And the local doctor at a little hospital wanted to get our 
sort of expert advice. So the local doctor called an operator, operator called me, I got my iPod touch, couple of taps, boom. Seconds later, connected to the local doctor, was able to talk and see the referring provider, the actual patient, the patient's mother, and was able to examine her remotely and be able to look at her face, look at the swelling, examine her eye movements, and even look at how her pupil reacted, all from my mobile device. So among the excitement of the moment and the mother's uh, impressed uh, uh, obvious uh, satisfaction, the little girl said to, to her mom's surprise, what's the big deal, mom? I, this is like Skype. I use this all the time. And she was like 10 years old. <laughs> so, well, then I looked at mom's uh, theory face and face to face, I was able to look at her eyes and tell her that her little girl was going to be fine. So, as a medical professional, the, the moment, the feeling was incredible. We could say it was picture perfect, but I should really say video perfect. Being able to do this and do it so smoothly that everyone was, was really impressed. So we could and we do measure many, many variables in order to measure the success of our program. Uh, cost, uh, transport time, survival of patients, uh, complication rates, uh, medical errors. But really the, the, the one variable that is most important and is very hard to quantify is the user satisfaction with improved communication. When that doctor who needs the expert advice can get to us really quickly, not using a phone but using a video live conversation with high definition, that is really uh, priceless. To me, the most incredible thing is not really the technology that makes this level of connection possible. Connection and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, interaction never thought possible years ago. To me, the most uh, important and the most incredible thing is that this is so simple, so obvious, so possible, so inexpensive, and yet we never thought of this before. <laughs> and that a gadget that was created for playing is now allowing us to improve patient care, maybe save lives, and save thousands of dollars along the way. So I, I really think technology is the key, but not just technology. Every technology is an idea behind a successful application. And also a group of users. In this case, us, physicians, providers, patients, to embrace that technology, to make it happen. I really think that the best is yet to come. Thank you very much.